Christy Jacobson, headmistress of the Buddha Dukai, where we teach authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu. We're also a school known for its training and the raw reality of self-defense. In this video today, we're going to look at the 21-foot rule and determine whether it's possible for someone to carry a concealed firearm and use it as a defensive measure in the world of self-defense. Now, this video is going to have three more sections to it. The next section is going to be some video footage of me teaching a knife fighting seminar right here in the Hanbu Dojo. Now, after that short clip, we're going to move on to an actual video presentation that many security officers and police officers use as an educational tool to teach them the raw reality of trying to grab a firearm in an intense, violent situation. The last section of this video is going to come right back here, and I'm going to give you my thoughts on the 21-foot rule. Okay, so um, I am a big advocate for the 21-foot rule. And anyone's one of my students knows what the 21 foot rule is. Um, they, have, they break it down, but it's a human reaction time in a certain space. It is absolutely damn near impossible to be able to use uh, a gun as a defensive measure. You, you don't have the time. This school, this in here, um, anyone who's been to the dojo knows that we, I teach small groups, usually six people per class, two, two, two. Uh, the, the, this room here is about 20 feet here, and it's like 11 something this way. And uh, it's like a little over 20 that way and a little over 10 that way. So, or 11. But my point with this is, I have, um, we have uh, practice firearms, like, um, you know, they look like the size of a Beretta or whatever, 9 millimeter, so on and so forth. Like the blue gun. And uh, we've also have airsoft guns, and I've done this many times. And I've lost every student that I've ever had to do this with, I've lost. I've never retained a student by doing this drill. Because if I've done this drill, it's because a student really thought they were Billy the Kid. They were this rootin', tootin', cowboy shooting. They have it. So I, said, I told them, I said, inside 21 feet, if someone's rushing you with a knife, you do not have the reactionary time to draw a concealed weapon, cock aim and shoot, and hit me before I stab you with a knife. Inside 21 feet, you can't do it. There's no way. Not the, not, the, not the damn thing. Now, if the gun is hot, that's different. Because, see, the thing is, people say, well, I, you see it in the movies, and I said, well, the gun's probably hot. You know what I mean? What I mean by hot is safe, gun out, safety's off. You know, the military are walking around with an M16, and they all they got to do is pull a trigger, and they're popping rounds, right? Well, that's not how the majority of people carry guns. Even, even in America, for all of you guys, who, and the majority of my followers are outside the United States, I know the majority of you think Americans, all of us carry guns, and we just want to shoot anything that's breathing. It's not true. Um, there are just some people that just, they do perpetuate that stereotype, but it's just not true. And uh, there's a, there's a it's, a, it's an LAPD police um, video. It's about four minutes long, and they show police officers coming in, and they literally trained police officers who are trained with firearms, trained to protect the public, cannot pull a gun inside 21 feet to protect themselves. This isn't the average Joe that has a conceal and carry. We're talking cops, people who are trained and carry one every day to protect the public. They can't do it. And if they can't do it, Bob, who just carries one around every now and again, sure as hell ain't going to be able to do it. You know what I mean? Now, Bob thinks he can, probably, but he can't. So we are going to take four minutes because I think it's important that you guys watch that so you guys understand where I'm coming from and you can see professionals that know what they're doing do it. Um, to finish up on the story of my 21-foot drill where I lose students, yes, I have students that come in and think that they're Billy the Kid and they like to carry their guns. And then I tell them that they can't stop me from cutting them and pulling their gun. So they wear their gun usually on this side of the room. I'm on that side of the room. And I ask them if they're ready, and then I whoosh, run after them with a knife, and I have killed, I am 100% in the last 14 years, I am undefeated before anyone to be able to pull and get one round off on me inside 20 feet. It's just, of course I've never had, now for some of you guys watching that thinking you're badass, no, I've never had a Navy SEAL be on this side of the room. But I've had a lot of people that think they're really good with guns be on this side of the room, and they've never done it. So before we begin, why I think this is important, because we are talking about life and death. I think you guys can watch the video, okay? Uh -huh. Here, officers have been told to investigate suspicious circumstances at night in a warehouse and react to what they find. At first glance, this officer's distance from the suspect looks safe enough. But an attacker can easily cover this distance faster than most officers can draw their guns. Remember, 
when you close the distance between yourself and the suspect, do so only by purposeful decision. In fact, at close distances, your only realistic option for controlling a suspect is empty hand tactics. Yet when officers are asked how they would control a knife attacker, they usually say, I'd shoot him, forgetting that they may not have time to in reality. Here, still unrehearsed, is what really happens when officers assume they can automatically use deadly force against a knifer. They stand their ground and try to draw or try to draw and disengage simultaneously, or even worse, try to draw, fall down and shoot. And they lose, because time and distance work for the offender and against the officer. With a reactionary gap of about one foot or less, it's impossible for you to react quickly enough to even touch your holstered sidearm once the attack begins. At about five feet, the average officer can't even get his sidearm unholstered. Unless your sidearm or baton is already out, you'll have to rely on physical control at five feet or less. At about ten feet, you might get your sidearm out, but you probably won't get a shot off. A suspect with a knife can close seven paces and deliver deadly force in less than one and one half seconds. For the average officer to deliver two rounds against an attacker who starts moving at 10 feet, the sidearm must already be drawn and ready to shoot. At about 15 feet, your chances get a little better if you're alert, anticipate danger, and are skilled with your equipment. But to deliver two rounds center of mass, your hand would already have to be on your sidearm when the attack begins. Tests with hundreds of officers reveal that in most cases, a minimum reactionary gap of 21 feet is required to react and deliver at least two rounds and to have enough time to move out of the attacker's path. Now before I share my final thoughts on the subject, I want to start out by saying that I'm not anti-gun, I'm anti-stupid. And there's a difference. Up to points you guys have seen me share my thoughts with my students at a knife fighting seminar. You've also seen a video presentation that many security professionals and police officers use as an educational tool. It's talked about the reality of trying to grab a firearm within a certain amount of distance and the reactionary time needed to do so. If at this point you guys really truly think you can be, you know, Billy the Kid, rootin' tootin', cowboy shooting, and within a, a specific distance of grabbing your gun, and using it as a defensive measure, well then, that's your life. You can do and choose whatever you want. There's nothing wrong with it. If you want to be a statistic, be one. The one thing that I find amazing that is not discussed about the 21-foot rule is that the reality of where a threat truly is. Nobody stands 20 feet away and threatens you. You're never going to have an attacker spend 20 feet away and yell, give me your purse, give me your wallet. You're not going to have someone that's a rapist be 20 feet away from you and rape you. You're not going to have someone 20 feet away from you and tell you they're going to take your kids and then take your kids 20 feet away. And if you can't do it at 21 feet, you sure as hell ain't going to do it at 15, you ain't going to do it at 10, and you got no chance in hell at 5, right? So I think that is extremely important to understand that the real reality of self-defense never happens 20 feet away. When you are in an actual altercation, it is up close and personal. It's sad to wake up every day and see the media just use fear tactics all of the time so it scares people into buying things to make them think that's what they need to protect themselves or protect their family. The raw reality is, if you don't have the skills to be able to do it, you can't do it. Most people can't hit a moving target. Most people don't practice with a gun enough to be good at it. They know how to, you know, cock aim and shoot. They might go out once or twice a year for target shooting. 
but they don't do it enough to be efficient at the weapon at a level of a security officer or a police officer or so on and so forth. They, they just don't do it enough, right? So the average Joe who's carrying a gun, you know, as a concealed weapon in a holster underneath a t-shirt, they didn't even factor that in. When you watch that video presentation, a police officer has the gun in a holster, but at least it's outside a t-shirt. Most people carry a concealed weapon and their gun is in a holster underneath their t-shirt. So if someone attacks you, you have to be like, hold on, hold on, pull your shirt up, pull, ka da da right? <laughs> all they have to do is this. That's it. You're going to do all those movements to their this. They put a knife on your throat and ask you for your wallet, ask you for your purse, tell you to get in the fucking car. Hold on, I got a gun, you should fear me. One more time guys, I'm not anti-gun, I'm anti-stupid. You guys can do whatever you want. If you really feel that you can do it, go ahead, do it. If you want to be a statistic, be a statistic. That's on you. As the headmistress of the Buddha Duke High, I have thousands of students all over the world who train with me in martial arts. I just want everyone to know the truth, the reality of being able to do it. The raw reality of trying to grab a gun that's stuck in a holster underneath your t-shirt when someone's already trying to knife you. That's the dumbest damn thing I think anybody could do. So these are my thoughts on the 21 foot rule. You can call it the 21 foot roll. You can call it the 20 foot roll. You can call it the 15 foot roll. Oh, you can't, you can't use a firearm inside 20 feet, 21 feet, 15 feet. You could call it whatever you want because you're, you're gonna be attacked in less than 10 feet. Hell, you're probably gonna be attacked in less than five feet. If you think you can, then be a statistic. That's on you. Everyone has a choice. You can choose to educate yourself and develop the skills needed to protect yourself and the ones you love, or you can just choose to be a statistic. The decision is up to you. I've said this before in many of the seminars that I teach, uh, knife fighting, so on and so forth. We're all gonna die, but we all don't have to die at the hands of someone else.